Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here discussing some more Warhammer Combat cards continuing this series talking about the best and worst cards in the game and we're going to be looking at the biggest faction, Space Marines with 172 bodyguards that seems to be increasing every month and we've got 9 warlords to discuss. So the first one is, uh, well, the very first warlord that you get in the game and that's Captain Akaran. He's the only rare warlord of all of the Space Marine warlords, and yet he has a ridiculously strong special rule. Uh, fun fact, actually, when the game was first released, his special rule was pretty terrible. All it did was increase the health of the warlord himself. So you just had Captain Akron with like 300 health. But yeah, the Iron Halo is extremely good. Uh, not only as a defensive ability, but also because the AI will attack into you thinking it can kill your things only for them to get saved by the Iron Halo and then you counterattack to deal extra damage. Just an amazing ability. And we got four other Warlords uh, representing the different attack types that uh, I am listing as more powerful ones. Lieutenant Tomeron and Grandmaster Voldus increase ranged and psychic attacks respectively very quickly so you can end up dealing tremendous damage as long as you deploy your strongest units first. Logan Grimnar is my personal favorite of the Space Marines, just his ability to deal extreme damage with the melee. And Space Marines have a, a lot of really strong melee cards to combo with him, so... And that cleave attack ignores shields, which is also what makes it really powerful for a melee warlord. Then we've got Helbrecht, who is also quite strong. Um, you do want to include cards with more than one attack type with him, so you can make the most of those buffs you get when killing enemies. Uh, but you do have to make sure that you kill the enemy with the melee attack. And then the bottom four, well, Watch Captain Artemis, uh, I don't really like his special rule because it's only really good against decks that have just a couple of bodyguards. If the enemy's running a bunch of chaff, like with Endless, uh, it's, it's just not good. Even though the stats on the Warlord himself and, and the Deadshot trait are quite good for the low cost of 23 points. Azrael actually has really strong stats at the max level, but at the lower levels, he actually has one of the worst stats of any Warlord in the game, I think. And I don't really like his playstyle because it forces you to alternate between different attack types each turn. His special rule can increase the damage of your units by a lot, uh, if you do make use of it, though. And then the two Supreme Commanders, Gilliman and Lionel Johnson, they're just not really all that well suited for ranked mode, I don't think, being so expensive. Though in 400 point match, they could get more interesting. Uh, as with the other videos, we're going to be starting with the ranged bodyguards. And there's so many cards in the Space Marine roster that I've actually split these into big and small ranged bodyguards. So we're starting off with the biggest stuff. I had to include the Astraeus in here, even though it's a Lord of War. Uh, this thing with Tolmeron is just absolutely crazy. Almost 500 health, shields, making it almost impossible to kill. It has big game hunter, so it can just blow anything else away, no matter how big it is. Uh, one after it's gotten a few buffs. Definitely one of the strongest ranged cards in the game. Then we've got the Ultramarine's Land Raider with Big Game Hunter and Ranged Scout. So this one also is able to just deal a huge amount of damage and has quite a bit of health as well. In third place we've got the Ravenwing Talon Master uh, which has Barrage and Outflank for its secondary trait. Also has a decent melee attack so I just thought it had pretty good stats for its cost. The last two are new tanks, and you'll notice that the uh, the big aircraft that you probably see very often in ranked mode with Tomeron are conspicuously missing here. Like the Storm Talon gunship and the Nephilim jet fighter, those are two very old cards that have been around for a long time, so a lot of players have those at uh, high levels. And they do actually deal more damage than these tanks. Uh, they also have the advantage of having high initiative, allowing you to take the first turn. It was a little bit hard to decide, you know, if those were actually better than these. I personally have not been able to, to test both of them out, but uh, I do want to showcase some of the newer cards here. So the Blood Angels Ball Predator, uh, this one has Barrage and Anti-Infantry for the secondary. And then the Repulsor Executioner is actually the only big vehicle that the Space Marines have that has Precision Shot. 
Next up, we got the small ranged bodyguards, which are important to run in the Tolmeron deck. You want to run maybe one or two big vehicles, but then fill the rest of the deck up with uh, these smaller guys. So in first place, this is a, just a ridiculously good card for 10 points. The Raven Guard Scout with Heavy Bolter, 68 ranged, and then ranged scout. In second place, we've got the Stern Guard with Pyre Cannon. Uh, this one just does a lot of damage, 91 ranged with Barrage. Uh, beats all of the other like cheaper barrage units. Uh, of course, I don't actually have this one at a very high level, so I don't use it. I instead use like the Dark Angels Aggressor with barrage. And third place, this is another new one: the White Scars Attack Bike with a Range Scout. Uh, so this one also just has a really high attack. And uh, again, being a newer card, I use the older Raven Guard uh, Scout Bike, which does the same thing but uh, with worse stats. Fourth place, this is just so ridiculous. The uh, This 19 point card with 92 ranged attack. It's anti-infantry, so uh, not nearly as good as like Barrage on the Stern Guard. But still, like for the cost, that's that's just so much damage. And then fifth place, uh, a ch another cheaper option. 12 points for the, the guy with the, the missile launcher, if you want a big game hunter. Moving on to melee. Now there's just so many melee bodyguards. I had to split this one into three sections. So we've got big, medium, and small bodyguards. Uh, for the top five big ones that are all over 40 points, in first place, obviously, Astarath the Grim. Uh, ridiculously good card. Just massive damage, 150 melee with Furious Charge and then Fear making him very hard to kill. Uh, Marnius Kalgar in second with the Inspiring Presence and Furious Charge. He can just come in swinging really hard. In third place, we've got Commander Dante, who does even more damage and has Berserk. Pretty scary card to face. In fourth place, we've got the Wolfen Dreadnought. This one has a very massive melee attack and Furious Charge as well. And then in fifth place, we've got Arjak Rockfist, uh, a more defensive option with the, the shields, and then a smaller Furious Charge with the secondary trait. Next up, this is actually the section where there are the, the most... I think really good cards and I, I've included five here but there's actually probably more like at least 10 different Space Marine bodyguards that could all do well in this category uh, but for me I think number one is Tor Gerdon uh, just his damage output having a decent ranged attack as well as melee big game hunter and then shields he's really hard to kill and does a lot of damage and second place, Kato Sicarius, a very new card, but one that many should have if you play the Anniversary event. It's got shields and then a, a one-time melee scout. And third place, we've got Chaplain Mores, who has Fear and Furious Charge. Uh, he's the cheapest of the bunch here. He's got excellent stats. Uh, then Chaplain Grimaldus, one of uh, two cards with Inspiring Presence that we're showing here. This guy has Fear. And remember that he his stats will be getting buffed by his own inspiring presence, so it's actually higher than uh, what you see here. And Belial I have at a pretty high level, so this is the guy that I tend to use. Moving on to small melee bodyguards. In first place, the Vanguard veteran there with uh, Deathblow. Man, this guy just 84 damage for 11 points. It's absurd. This guy is just way overtuned, I think, but... Yeah, one that I definitely run in a melee deck. Corsaro Khan here with Big Game Hunter and Target Acquired can be good. With Logan Grimnar if you want to focus down the lowest health enemy to set up a big cleave attack. And third and fourth, we've got two very similar cards. Uh, I run the Biker because I have him at a high level. He's just a really old card. The Jump Pack Sergeant is much newer, but uh, as you can see, comparing him side to side by side, uh, he's obviously got higher damage and then a much cheaper option at eight points if you need just a cheap melee scout especially good for logan uh, we got the little cyber wolf there space marine have some pretty powerful psychers in first place we got tigurius who has shields and warp surge so just a one-time psychic attack when he deploys uh, he does have kind of low health for his cost as do actually a lot of these psychers but but yeah, at max level, I mean, he can still block a lot of damage and dish out a ton as well. Mephiston, uh, really high attack stats and also a big death blow, so he can actually be used in melee decks as well as psychic decks. Nail Stormcaller, uh, a bit on the weaker side at the lower levels, I think, but at max level, he is able to just deal a lot of damage and is a good source of inspiring presence for psychic decks. 
In fourth place, we've got the Librarian and Terminator armor with Psionic Blast and Shield for the secondary, so all three attack types is nice. Doesn't have nearly as high psychic damage output as the others, though. And then fifth place, I've got another newer card here, the Raven Guard Librarian with Psychic Scout. So if you just need a quick boost to your psychic attack, uh, he can provide that. And then we've got the support bodyguards. The best in the bunch for me, one that I run in almost every Space Marine deck, is the Ultramarine's Tech Marine. Only 10 points for a Medicaid. Really great value. Now the Apothecary, same deal. He is 5 points more, but uh, does have slightly higher attack stats and a little bit more health. In third place, we've got the Deathwing Knight. Space Marines actually almost have hardly any taunt cards at all. Uh, but if you do want to protect your other cards, this guy is the, the cheapest and the best one to do the job. In fourth place, we got a very new card here, but uh, this guy is kind of similar to Fabius Bile in that he is able to dish out a lot of damage and also heal. So um, I don't have him in my collection, but yeah, he could potentially be a really powerful addition to a melee deck. And then fifth place, there were really no other uh, good options, so just threw in the Sanguinary Priest. And then finally we've got, of course, you know, with a very bloated roster, Space Marines just have a whole lot of cards with overlapping roles. I think a lot of them have been rendered obsolete due to power creep, but yeah, most of these cards either they have uh, just a single trait that is not very useful, or they just don't have the stats to back up the trait they have. For example, like a, the two Terminators in the top right are prime example of that, like low damage Furious Charge, low damage Death Blow, uh, really not that good. So yeah, I mean with so many other really good options, legendaries and epic cards, uh, all of these cards just sort of fall by the wayside. So that was a lot to get through, but hope there was some useful information for you. Let me know if you have any other ideas for good strategies to use with the Space Marines. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.